All right. So on Friday, um, on, I, whenever I saw you before, I don't remember. We were we built our box. We all created a box. We had it all set up. Um, it is 15 by 12. So he's written an equation for this. We want a volume of 125. So what was our volume equation? You have this written down that you should. 15 minus 2x. 15 minus 2x. 12 minus 2x. 12 minus 2x. Times x. So on test day, when I give you a different size piece of paper, maybe it's 18 by 20. Then what will your volume equation be? 18 minus 2x, 20 minus 2x, and x. We are getting ready to answer uh, the question. We're going to graph this <coughs> <in our> calculator. <laughs> to graph it, we have to have our window set so that we can see the part of the graph that we need to see. Guys, if you graph that equation on your calculator, it is going to look like this. Not all of that is reasonable in this problem. This is a word problem. They have restrictions. So what did we say our x's were? Oh my gosh, where my markers were? What did we say our x's were? X min? we said was zero and x max was six. As an interval, <coughs> x is between zero and six. Now, who can explain why that is? Because um, uh, that's the thing that can fit in between when you cut off the side. Exactly. Sides. Remember, this is x. If this is 12 all the way across, can x be 8? No, you don't have enough. You only have 12. So the biggest x can be is 6. <coughs> now, y then is also 0. Because y is the volume, and can volume be negative? And y max, this is the toughie, <coughs> but not for us, because we need our maximum, we need our y to be 125. So, I don't know what I told you the other day, I'm going to make it 150, because I'd like to see a little bit higher. Could that be 160? Could that be 200? Could that be anything? Yeah, as long as it's bigger than 25. <coughs> All right. So now, I can't remember if we got the equations in or not. But I'm going to go ahead and put in that equation, including the parentheses. <coughs> Yeah, yeah. 
So the question says, where does it equal 125? That would be right here and right here. Would you agree with that? So, second calc intercept. Okay, so we've gone through this before, I can't remember. Second calc, and then choose the intersect option, because we want to know where does the line intersect the curve. And then it wants your cursor, and I'm using my left and right arrow buttons, left for me. Get your cursor over here somewhere. You need to be on the left side of this point. So right there it is. Press enter. Then it's going to pop up to the line and you want to be on the right side of this point. Press enter. And then we want to be on the point. So I got this one to be 0.942. Anybody else with that? 0.942? And then I gotta do the same thing over here. So second calc intersect. Now, here's the point I'm looking for. I need my cursor to be over here. Lower left side, left side. And then I need it to be over here, right side. Now I'm gonna move it using my arrow buttons. Those of you that had Mrs. Hollis, this is how she does every problem. I got 3.778. So the answer to question D, A, or A, what size corner should be cut out? Either 0.942 inches or 3.778 inches. That's the size of corners that should be cut out. Now, B says, what if I want the volume to be more than 125? Remember, this is 125 right here. If I want to be more than 125, what? Um, no, but you're close. If I want to be more than, wouldn't I want to be in this area right here? Isn't yeah. this more than? Yeah. So I don't subtract them, I write that as an interval. That would be the interval from 942 to 3778. All the numbers in between those two, give me a volume bigger than 125. So I don't have to get any more math. I just have to recognize this is what I'm looking for. And then, what size corner should be cut to yield the box with the volume of at most 1.5? Zero. Yep. 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 So it would be this part of the graph and this part of the graph. Would you agree with that? Now, here is where things are a little different. You are used to saying when you do these, negative infinity to 0 0.942, and then 3.778 to infinity. That's the way we answer when you're using a number line, remember? But somebody already said, this doesn't go to negative infinity. Remember what we said about x? My yeah. x's start with zero, so this needs to be a zero. And they end with six. So that has to be a six. I mean, would it not be, would it be a practice? Let's look at that. I didn't read it carefully. At most 125. Yep, that means I could include that, so that would be practical. You're exactly right. 
All right, so now you and your teammate are going to repeat the problem. You're going to answer the very same questions, but the paper is 20 by 23. <coughs> So your equation will be modified, and obviously these things. But it's still 125. Yeah, we'll keep it at 125. This is pretty easy. <coughs> so I guess this will Oh, 
I thought that said more than two. Oh, I did that kind of more than two. If I want more than 125, then don't I want everything in between? Yep. So 0.287 comma 8.713. Yep. And then if I want at most 125, where do I start? Zero. Zero. the same, but the 
grouping change, that's how things are associated change, that's association change. For top line, it's multiplication. Bottom line, it's addition. It's the same property. We just use it for times or that.
exact order? So negative 3 minus negative 1 squared and 8 minus 5 squared. This distance, negative 3 minus negative 1, 8 minus 5. Yeah. 
after I group together all my fours, how many are left over? One. Well, I don't know. How would I figure that out? Divide 314 into groups of four. So I got 78 if I did this math right with a remainder of two? Yeah. Okay, so what does that mean? That means if I actually did write them all out, there'd be 78 of these groups. And then on the very end, there would be two little i's, which is i squared, which is negative one. So the answer is negative one. So we divide it. These don't, these don't matter because these are all one times one times one times one times one times <coughs> What matters is that. So we're finding out what's in there. No, you're finding out what the remainder is when you divide by four. If the remainder had been one, that would mean there was just one eye left. So one eye would be the answer. One eye. If the remainder's two, it's i squared, which is negative one. What if the remainder's three? That would be negative one times i. Negative one i. And if it goes in evenly, then it's just going to be one because it's one, 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 right? So easy problem. You want to divide by four, and then look at the remainder. Okay, what is the matter with you? What's the matter? No, there's a sound. A sound? A sound in the hole. Well, that thing makes a sound, so I know it's irritating. No. I worry. They got other issues, so this is a priority, but yeah. I don't know what the other sound. Are you making sounds back there? I'll be trying to lock because he farted. What? I'll be trying to lock because he farted. No, I, uh, I. Alright, man. Let's be gentlemen. Alright. Okay. Just pour the beer. Alright, here we go. Where did we lose the x squared? Like, 
Because it was in the three X. Three X squared. Oh, we hit shouldn't have lost that.